a fell winter's helm, when was the last time you used this exotic? For me, it was quite a few seasons back to where I was trying to make it relevant and notify everyone as to how strong it is. Although it's limited in its use on certain activities, it's still one of my most favorite exotics to use if you ever want to bombard everyone with suppression and debuffs galore. And that's what we are going to be talking about in today's video, suppression and debuffs via Void 3.0. Let me tell you, a Void 3.0 with Fell Winters is a godsend that makes this exotic very much viable for endgame content, including Grand Masters, to a degree. With suppression abilities being more common now, we can lock down areas with ease and make progression in tough content a breeze. But you know what else makes good progression when not suppressing our enemies in Void Light? This channel right here. So if you enjoy my content, then please leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications as I would really appreciate it. So, for the subclass, we'll be using Cataclysm as it provides the most amount of damage in one go via super use. So, to make Felwinters viable in endgame content, we need to understand the exotic's design and function. The exotic allows us to suppress and debuff a target if they are killed via melee or finishers. This debuff is around 30% and can be chained back to back if we pull it off multiple times. Using melee in endgame can be helpful at times, but not all the times, depending on the combatants you face. For example, minor combatants will guarantee the exotic to activate on melee, while majors and above will be a bit tougher to pull off. So in this case, we would use the finishers instead, since that's easier to do and safer. So to give you an idea as to how we build around the finishers aspect, let me show you what I am rolling with. For aspects, we have the Feed the Void, where defeating a combatant with void abilities activates Devour for a constant health regen. We then have Child of the Old Gods, which allows us to shoot out a Void Soul after using our Rift, that will drain the combatant's health, debuff, suppress, and grant us ability energy back all in one. For Fragments, we have Echo Obscurity, which allows us to go invisible the moment we use our finisher, Echo of Explosion, which allows our Void Finder Blows to cause a Void Detonation, Echo of Undermining, which allows our grenades to weaken by 15%, and Echo of Persistent, which increases the duration timer of Devour and Invisibility. Next, we have the stats and kits being used. We have 80 in Discipline, 60 in Intellect, and 40 in Strength, so that we can greatly benefit from suppressing combatants through other means. For mods, we have Volatile Flow, that will allow our Void Weapons to cause Void Explosion, a Bountiful Wealth, an extra Elemental Well created, Elemental Ordnance, that allows our grenades to create wells, Well of Tenacity, for the extra level of defense, and Elemental Armaments, for allowing our Void Weapons to create wells as well, alongside the Lucan Finisher mod and Explosive Finisher mod. So the gist of the build is to make it so that every time we weaken a target to a finish level, we can go in, finish them, and then become invisible thanks to the Echo Obscurity Fragment. While everyone is dumbfounded, we can then go ahead and get another target and repeat as many times as we like while staying hidden and healthy, and one by one, this can make taking out large groups very easy for a team. On top of that, the Lucan Finisher mod will grant us heavy if we do this on a Lucan High or Champion, while the Explosive Finisher mod will grant us full grenades that we can use as many times as we like. It's a pretty straightforward build that grants great synergy and great application with this Seasons Void update. Now, I've only seen one person do this, and that's another content creator named Truds, who I highly recommend you watch if you like interesting builds like this. It's thanks to him I finally knew how to go about doing the build in general. Now, to make the build even more effective, you'll need some good weapons to back it up, and I have some pretty good ones you can use. Primary wise, we have the Friction Fire SNG with Threat Detector and Wellspring, which are all great perks for a build designed around getting close and getting abilities back. Threat is good as it increases the reload speed and stability and handling of a weapon when in close proximity of combatants, while Wellspring will grant us energy per kill made with it. Ideally, you'll want a weapon in your primary that can be used to weaken the target for finishers, but also grant you some energy back so you can play it safe. Demolitionist is a great perk to have as well. But considering your build already has enough energy for this area, it would be kind of pointless unless you have low discipline. Don't get too hung up on your primary though, as anything is free to go here. For our secondary, we have the Graviton Lance Exotic, a weapon that I love to use for simple effects, but very useful how weak it felt on some combatants. It's great to use with Void 3.0 now, as this exotic effect combined with volatile rounds can make groups of ads disappear within seconds, which is great for getting energy back quickly. This is more of a personal choice, as I wanted to use the new Raid Pulse instead, but can't get it to drop. However, I do recommend you try and get a point in Inquiry Scout Rifle with adaptive munitions, as it makes it great for usage in endgame content, 
and this origin trait as well can make Doom Finisher's new bosses a lot more safer in the grand scheme of things. It fought heavy with the Palomaya B rocket launcher with Ambitious Assassin and Explosive Light, and although not void, it's a great weapon to have as the two following parts can make doing extra damage really worth the weight it brings. Now, of course, you can go with the corrective measure instead, since heavy machine guns will be getting a buff quite soon, and this could make them even more viable compared to rockets in terms of ammo usage. For the stats, we have already established that discipline will be your biggest priority in the build, as this will be triggering elemental wells and be adding a support in terms of covering more suppression when needed. Although we have intellect and strength as well, these two stats won't have that big of a player role that you may think. Now, discipline at 80 should be survivable enough for the users, as this is to negate the net loss from using the fragment that debuffs our grenades. Following that, we have the Elemental Orders mod and Battle for World mod, which allows us to create worlds upon demand for all of our abilities. On top of that, we also have the Absolution mod, which grants us energy to all abilities via Orbs of Power Collected, and this will be linked in with the Harmonic Siphon mod so that we can create more worlds faster. Overall though, Explosive Finisher is probably going to be the most sought after mod you'll want to use since it will give you full grenades back for your finishers, although this will take some super energy away from you. This is of course fine, as getting super energy back is relatively easy for the build, and we won't use our grenades non-stop as this can backfire if not done correctly. Of course, if you do want to use your grenades non-stop, then get your intellect up to at least 80, or add on the frontal wisdom mod so you can make up the difference here and there. Now, leftover wise, we have the machine gun ammo finder mod, which allows us to find machine gun ammo easier, but this can be swapped out for our rocket launcher ammo finder instead if you decide to use rockets more. I've opted into using both depending on the content I'm playing. We then have the installation mod that grants us class ability energy back from collecting orbs of power. Now, this should give you a rough idea as to how I put my build together, so here is everything condensed into a list to make it a bit more easier for you. For head, we have Discipline, Harmonic Siphon, Machine Gun Ammo Finder, and Volatile Flow mod. Arm, we have Discipline, Fast Ball, and Battle for World mods. Chest, we have Discipline, Concussive Dampener, Thermal Shot Plating, and Elemental Orders mod. Leg, we have Discipline, Insulation, Absolution, and Well Tenacity mod. Bond, we have Mind Resilience, Lucent Finisher, Explosive Finisher, and Elemental Armaments mod. This is quite a unique take on Unsorted that many people don't want to use or don't know how to use because it's not that endgame worthy. Now, for a practically fun build in mind, a felt winter can make doing gambit, strikes, nightfalls, or any general activity fun, as you have plenty of ways to activate it. Now, when it comes down to endgame content though, that's where it hits a deadline as it's a bit harder to pull off at times. Now, one common comment that many players have mentioned to me before about the exotic is the lack of synergy it provides in terms of abilities and subclass to use. From the top of my head, both Void and Stasis are the only ones that offer a variety of use around the exotic with the fragments and aspects added, and even before that it was just Stasis, Arc, and Pre-Void at a limited use. And this is still the same, but Void 3.0 has made an exception out of this. Building on the one weakness of the Zotic allows us to pocket more often and make it easier for players like us not to worry about activating it at the right moment. Using just finishers allows us to pot the ability non-stop, since finishers are easier to do, and our fragments can support us to the point that going against multiple Luke and Hive or Champions can be done easily as long as we get the finisher in first. A great example of this is the Lightblade first room encounter on Master difficulty. You have a ton of different combatants in one small area, and all you need to do is get a finisher on one champion, and you can control that area for the majority of the time. If that's not safe enough, they can always use a suppression grenade, which will either kill and trigger void detonators and devour, or stun and debuff them while you do your thing. If you choose this path, I would highly, highly recommend you add on the Energy Vampirism mod instead of the Explosive Finisher mod, as this will grant energy back as well. In simple terms, the build can cause a lot of havoc when pulled off right, but you still have to play it safe as you're not invincible. Now, you can stun yourself with your suppression nades if you hit yourself with them, and also getting finishers on combatants can also be deadly if a hard hitting target knows exactly where you are. You also have the issue of GMs to where you have to decide if the risk is worth the sacrifice, as it can help you and your team out if it's pulled off correctly, but if you mess up, then you lost a revive and it's going to be a bit more harder for your team to get you. 
I personally believe keeping this to massive level content is the best way to play, as that's where the build will feel more at home. Not too tough, but not too easy either. Hopefully, once you get the feel of the build, you'll understand where I come from. But if you want to use the Night Force, such as GMs, then by all means do give it a try. Just be aware of the environment. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications. Also, follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny news and content. Once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all next one.